guess what we have here this is the all-new sony fe 14 millimeter f 1.8 g master and i am actually very much surprised So to give you a bit of a backgrounder, when I was starting out in landscape photography, we would make these jokes about that dream lens that we would want to have in the future. And a lot of them were very unrealistic. And one of them was, of course, an ultra-wide angle lens that went up to 1.8, which is the aperture, the usual maximum aperture that you would dream of when you're a beginner because most of us jump from the kit lens to the 50 millimeter 1.8. And it was just an odd thought, of course, to think that what if we had something that wide? What if we had something around 17 or 18 that can do f 1.8? And today I'm holding something that does 14 millimeters at f 1.8. And for a landscape photographer, especially with, with quite a bit of experience, you would know that you would really want that f1.8 for shooting at night. Now when I first got and opened the box of this lens, I first thought, wait, it doesn't feel like there's anything inside. It just feels like there's a soft case inside. And that's really what surprised me because looking back uh, half a decade ago, you would have thought that if ever a lens like this would ever come, it's supposed to be really big and really heavy. Well, this 14mm G Master comes in at just one pound. And it's just 3.3 by 3.9 inches. It's very, very small. And considering that this would be a lens you would bring along with your Trinity if you're a landscape photographer, you, you're never gonna feel the difference in weight because it's barely there in your bag and the thing is it's gonna come in when it's crucial to have it so some of the key features of this lens are basically the same things we can find on most G master lenses and since this comes in very wide you're gonna expect that it's gonna come with a very round front element and that's gonna do wonders in making distortion at a minimal and at the same time making it very sharp it doesn't have a filter thread though it has a slot for rear filters in the back so it comes with a very straightforward design the more distal ring is the focus ring which is very smooth and we have a clicking switch right here which gives you control of the focusing and we also have a focus hold button that can be customizable to whatever use you want to. And lastly, it has its own aperture ring. And as you can see, it goes from f1.8 to f16 with another stop for automatic. Or if you want to control the aperture from the body, you can use it there. And lastly, there is a switch right here to take out the click of the aperture ring. So if you want to use this for video, it's gonna be very smooth. Before anything else, we have to check this lens's bokeh. It's a good thing my friend Shara was there and she happily posed for these photos. As you can see, even if we're not too up close, shooting at f1.8 gives us a very smooth background blur. Next I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shoot these verticals and try to see how much distortion there is. Now focus your attention to the lines on the sides. Even at 14 millimeters wide, the distortion on this lens is very well controlled. So the last thing I'm gonna do is of course shoot what I really came for, and it is to shoot this very beautiful cityscape. This amazing view from DMCI's Brio Towers is definitely one of the best views to be testing such a wide lens. 
This vantage point offers a wide view of Ayala Avenue and almost the entire Makati CBD. On the other side, it offers a bird's eye view of Guadalupe and Edsa, at the same time a good view of Bonifacio Global City. Now that we're done testing it in the city, it's time to go to the mountains. So when I first found out about this new 14mm Z Master from Sony, there was one thing that was in my head. I knew that there's this particular shot that I had to do to give justice to this lens. And that's what I'm about to do tonight. Hopefully the weather cooperates. And of course, that is shooting nightscapes. Now, shooting nightscapes can be done with other lenses, but the trick to doing it is to use a very big aperture. And it's, it's very significant that this is a 14 millimeter. It's very wide, but at the same time, it does f1.8, which means that I can shoot the Milky Way if it comes up and be able to do it in lower ISOs. It was going to be a long night, there's a lot of excitement, but as well as uncertainty regarding the weather. So it's 5 minutes to 2 a.m. And the weather hasn't really been entirely perfect, but at the same time, we've been given quite a few minutes of clarity and it's actually pretty exciting to see some very thin clouds in the sky making things quite a bit more interesting. Not the perfect uh, time to shoot the night sky but it's, it's really a breath of fresh air to be doing this. After just a few short intermittent minutes of clarity, we were covered in clouds, and we were also covered in fog. Even in the morning, there was no sunrise to shoot. For any experienced landscape photographer, this is a sign. It's time to pack up and go home. But I did take away some images that I am really happy with. Those short minutes of clarity actually revealed the magnificent night sky. And to be able to photograph it was just overwhelming. The dozens of night sky images I got to bring home were good as standalone images or as composite images for other locations. So I spent the last two weeks with, of course, the 14mm f1.8 G Master. And here are my impressions. Of course, number one thing, the size. Again, this is the dream landscape photographer's lens. It's 14 millimeters wide, and at the same time, it goes to f1.8. This is the perfect lens for when you want to do nightscapes. And such a thing, I would expect to be much bigger, much thicker, with, with uh, so much more bulk. But no, it's just three inches, it's one pound, and it's barely even there in your bag along with your other lenses. And of course, f1.8, it allows me to shoot amazing nightscapes that are cleaner because I can go lower ISOs and that's very important for me as a landscape photographer because I don't want noisy images. And of course, it's a G Master. It delivers the image quality that represents the G Master line. And there's no doubt about that. So again, if you have any questions about this lens, any reactions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And don't forget to like this video, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next lens review.